All right, hi everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, which is going to be on the live trading session. I will right, just wait uh, for a minute for everyone to start tuning in, and then we'll be good to go. I just want to make sure you guys can see my screen. Uh, you should be seeing the first page of the presentation slides, which is live trading session uh, brought to you by Tickmill 2023. All right, thanks, Zainab. All right, and of course, do take note, we've got the Q&A and the chat windows open as well. So uh, do not hesitate to drop me any questions or queries should you have any uh, during, the, during today's webinar. All right, okay, uh, I think we're good to go. So all right, before we start, as usual, please take note of the disclaimer and the high risk warning. Uh, the material provided here is for information purposes only and should not be considered as investment advice. Uh, the views, information, or opinions expressed in the text belong solely to the author and not to the author's employer, organization, committee, or other group or individual or company. And of course, CFDs are complex instruments and come with a high, risk of losing money rapidly due to leverage. All right, so do take note of the disclaimer and the high risk warning as well. All right, okay. Uh, so my name is Ketan Ramachandra. So this webinar series is brought to you in a special partnership between Tickmill and Everest Fortune Group, where Everest Fortune Group has been the finalist for best FX and equity research for the following years, 2019, 2020, and 2021. All right, okay, so just a simple agenda before we dive into um, the charts on trading view so we'll take a look at the key news events that are coming up this week and then of course we'll do a live analysis on the uh, major fx pairs commodities and indices as well and any other requests that you may have all right so here are uh, some of the key events to take note of there's other data, economic data uh, releases coming up this week but we actually have four major central banks announcing their monetary policy statements uh, this week. So starting with uh, the Federal Reserve on Thursday, 20th of September, or well, depending on your time zone, whether it's Wednesday or Thursday, but it's 20th of September, uh, there we have the FOMC meeting coming up. And then we have uh, on the 21st of September, we have the Swiss National Bank as well as the Bank of England announcing their respective uh, monetary policy statements. And we round up with the Bank of Japan uh, announcing theirs on Friday, 22nd of September. Right, so do take note of these key dates and the time as well. well. We'll jump over to Forex Factory as well, so you guys can look at the time as well. But just to cover uh, what can uh, what we can we expect going to going into each of the respective uh, monetary policy decisions. All right. Okay, so first up, we have the Federal Reserve and their FOMC meeting, which will be concluded on the 20th of September. Right now, the Fed funds rate currently sits at 5.5%. And uh, although inflation has uh, picked up in the US, if we look at headline CPI uh, for the month of July and August, it's actually increased. We, it was 3% in June, 3.2% in July, and 3.7% in August. But despite the slight uptick in uh, headline CPI data, uh, it is quite it is widely expected that the Federal Reserve are ready to keep rates on hold at this week's meeting. Right, they feel that uh, interest rates are uh, sufficient sufficiently high for now, and despite inflation looking to be uh, picking up again, they they are adopting a wait and see approach for this week's meeting. Right. So, as mentioned here, okay, so it's just a quick summary of what happened at Jackson Hole and what uh, uh, could and what could we expect for this week's meeting, right? So, first of all, of course, the Federal Reserve is keeping it uh, open, right? They're open to holding rates as well as increasing rates if necessary to combat inflation. But as of now, it does seem that they are going to keep rates steady at this week's meeting. 
right? Okay, so we could have a case where uh, we may see the dollar index uh, pull back this week, but do to take note, following the interest rate announcement, uh, Chairman Jerome Powell will also be uh, having a press conference. So during this press conference, if he turns out to be very hawkish, we could see demand for the US dollar pick up again, right? So although Fed is going to keep rates on hold, very likely going to keep rates on hold, we may see the dollar index pull back for the first half of this week. But if Chairman Jerome Powell comes out to be hawkish during his press conference, we could see some of the moves reverse and we could see dollar index climb higher. All right, next is uh, the Swiss National Bank. The interest rate is currently at 1.75%. And um, or 1.75, yeah, 1.75 percent. And because the level of uh, inflation projections have increased in uh, Switzerland due to second round effects of elevated electricity prices, increased rents, it's very likely they're going to raise rates again. So they are going to raise it by 25 basis points to bring it up to two percent. So it, it's also going to be a very volatile uh, week for the dollar franc because we have uh, FOMC first. And then we have uh, Swiss National Bank after. So we could see, uh, potentially see uh, dollar franc rise uh, after the FOMC meeting. And then when SNB releases its uh, interest rate decision, we could see dollar franc pull back. Okay, then quickly moving on to uh, the UK. Interest rates are currently at 5.25%. We can also see that they, the Bank of England has raised interest rates very aggressively. And... Of course, because inflation is still uh, historically high in the UK, uh, but the market is expecting the Bank of England to raise rates to 5.5% at this week's meeting, right? Although they expect inflation to fall significantly further by the end of the year, it is quite likely that the Bank of England will still raise interest rates this week. All right. Then finally, we end off with Japan. Japan has kept its uh, main interest rate at negative 0.1%. Since 2016, they are the only country to have not really suffered from uh, inflation when looking at the CPI data. So they will continue to expand the monetary base until inflation exceeds 2% on an annualized basis. But the main thing to look out for uh, uh, during the BOJ uh, announcement and the press conference would be uh, with regards to the yield curve control policy. So just to simply put this, this is a policy uh, level that's used to control the bond yields. And in the previous meeting, they actually uh, increased this ceiling to 0.5%. So what does this mean? So this means that uh, bond yields in Japan are allowed to rise. So that means this is a potential trigger for the Japanese yen to strengthen. So if the Japanese yen strengthens, that means dollar yen is going to fall. So even though the Bank of Japan may keep interest rates at negative 0.1%, but if they tweak the yield curve control once more and they increase uh, the ceiling, this could cause the Japanese yen to strengthen and that means dollar yen could fall. So do take note of uh, of this, uh, how, how to interpret this piece of information. All right, okay, now let's quickly move over to Forex Factory. Right, okay, so I'm on GMT time. Uh, and here, this is uh, this is the calendar for this week, right? Okay, so tomorrow we have, apart from the four major central banks announcing their interest rate decisions, we also have uh, CPI data out of Canada. We've got uh, the monetary policy meeting minutes from Australia, plus a few other things, all right? Okay, so just to focus on the central banks, so September 20th, uh, 6 p.m. GMT time, uh, the Federal Reserve will uh, update their Fed funds rate and release their statement. As you can see here, currently the Fed funds rate or the interest rate sits at 5.5%. The forecast is for them to keep rates on hold, which is widely expected. But do take note of the press conference that follows at 6.30 p.m. This is going to be key because uh, markets and traders will get a very good insight into uh, the chairman's uh, thoughts and outlooks outlook for the rest of the year, right? So although they may keep rates on hold, uh, but if the press conference turns out to be quite hawkish, we may see demand for the dollar pickup. 
Okay, then moving on to uh, Thursday, 21st of September, we've got the Swiss National Bank announcing their policy rate. This is at 7.30 a.m. GMT. And uh, we can see here that the rate is currently at 1.75%. They're going to increase it by 25 basis points to 2%. So it's very likely that the Swiss National Bank will raise interest rates and this potentially could cause the dollar franc to fall. Following which, we've got the Bank of England at 11 a.m. Uh, announcing their official bank rate. So as you can see here, currently the bank rate, official bank rate sits at 5.25%. They too are going to increase it uh, to 5.5%. Okay, and then finally we have Japan, uh, the Bank of Japan uh, releasing their statements. As you can see over here, it is indicated as tentative, but usually based on past uh, announcements, uh, the Bank of Japan has released its policy statement at about usually between um, 3 and 4 a.m. GMT time, right? Usually between 3 and 4 a.m. GMT time. That's when they have usually released their policy statement and the press conference usually follows one after one hour after the release, all right? So do take note of the main uh, central bank decisions that are coming up this week and the time of the statement release as well as the time of the press conference because all of these will have a major impact on currency markets this week. All right, okay, now we can finally dive into the charts, right? So here we are on trading view, right? Okay, so I'm on the four hour time frame for the dollar index. All right, hi everyone, good to see you. All right, hi Jamilu, good to see you as well. Uh, any other questions, comments coming in? No, all right, okay. So, um. As you can see, dollar index is trading about 105 or 22. Uh, let's just zoom out a little bit and get some perspective on how strong the dollar has been over the last eight weeks or so. Right, so we've had, so okay, just to recap, I'm on the weekly time frame now for the dollar index. And as you can see, price has made uh, nine consecutive weeks of strong gains for the dollar index. Of course, during the week of 28th of August, as well as 11th September, the dollar index actually pulled back at the start of the week, but it actually turned around and bounced higher to close the week higher. But essentially, you can see nine strong consecutive weeks of gains for the dollar index. And it does seem like we're approaching a pretty uh, important resistance level because we can see back in, um, what is this? Uh, yeah, in the first week of March, we can see price making a very significant swing high here. Right, So this points us that this is a very key resistance area and price is uh, now pulling back from this level. Right? As, as I mentioned, because markets are expecting Federal Reserve to keep rates on hold, we may see the dollar index pull back for the first half of the week. Uh, but if the press conference turns out to be very hawkish by uh, Jerome, Chairman Jerome Powell, we could see uh, dollar index move higher again. All right. So let's just uh, now focus in back on uh, the four hour time frame. So as you can see, this is the weekly time frame just to give us some perspective on how strong the dollar has been and where the major resistance level is, at least for the first resistance. And we can see where the major first support is as well. All right. So now let's uh, go into the daily time frame. What was this? Uh, all right. Okay. Okay. So this is the daily time frame. Okay. We can see price is now currently uh, uh, pulling back as we speak. So I think we can also do a Fibonacci retracement together to identify some of the key support levels. Right. So I'm going to start this retracement from this swing low on the 14th of July, ending with the swing high on 14th of September. Right. Okay. In terms of overlap, we see this level at 104.50 as a very strong overlap support. Why is that? Because we can see price making a significant swing high here in uh, the end of May. And as recently as uh, 11th of September last week, price bounced off this level pretty strongly as well. So we've got two instances where price has uh, reacted off this level very strongly. And hence, that's how we've identified this as the first support. Actually, we can even say that uh, we can even say that this level here, right, when price made this swing high here on 25th of August, uh, so there's three instances where the dollar index uh, actually bounced off or reacted off this level, 
which gives us uh, significance, uh, which gives us confidence to identify this level at 104.50 as a key overlap support. All right. Okay, so let's just get rid of some of the annotations. Okay. Uh, okay, we can see that none of the Fibonacci retracement levels generally line up with any key overlaps. So I think for now, I would just uh, remove this Fibonacci um, retracement level. All right, we do see a Fibonacci projection level at 61.8%. Now, this projection level uh, was identified by using, by starting the, uh, in this case, we would use the trend-based Fibonacci extension, right? So I'm just going to show you guys how we did this, right? So let's just delete that. So we're going to use the tool, which is called trend-based Fibonacci extension. So this uses three points. So we'll start with the swing low here on 30th of August, going up to the swing high on 7th of September, and we end with the swing low on 11th of September, right? So as you can see, the 61 percent Fibonacci projection level lines up very squarely with the first resistance as well. So you can see here on the daily time frame as well, price making a very significant swing high here on 8th of March, which is also a level that coincides with the 61.8% Fibonacci retracement level. Now let's just pull up the 78.6 as well and see if that can help us identify uh, perhaps the second uh, resistance level. Actually, let's pull up all. So these are the key Projection levels, 61.8%, 78.6%, and 100%. Right. Okay, 68.6% doesn't seem to line up with any other level, but I do see price making a significant swing high here as well. This took place um, on uh, 29th of November last year. You can see price making a significant swing here, and it aligns quite close to where the 100% Fibonacci projection level is. So this is, is this is how I would identify the second uh, major resistance zone for the dollar index, right? So in this case, we'll just keep 100 and 61.8% uh, Fibonacci projection levels. Okay, so this is how we've done second resistance, identified rather, sorry, the second resistance, first resistance, and the first support. Okay, now let's zoom in again into a, a lower time frame. In this case, now I'm going to look at the four hour time frame. Right? If we zoom in here and look at where price is currently trading, uh, dollar index has been ranging uh, in a, uh, within a very narrow band since it opened up this morning. Right, It's been trading between 105.20 and about 105.36. Right? So a very narrow band. It's actually been a very quiet day for currency uh, markets uh, thus far. And uh, if you see the dotted lines, I have a red dotted line here at 105.43 and a green dotted line here at 105.15. Now, I've identified these levels as intermediate support and resistance levels, right? So you can see uh, when price made the swing high on 14th of September, I've used that swing high to identify 105.43 as an intermediate resistance level. And if you look here, back from 7th of September all the way to where price is currently trading, we see a nice overlap level as well at 105.15. So that's how I've identified this intermediate support using this overlap level. Right. So price, as I mentioned, price is currently ranging between uh, these two levels, which is a very narrow range. And it is possibly waiting for uh, a trigger for a move in either direction. Right, so but I think most likely, at least for the first half of the week, the dollar index could be weak and it could start to pull back before FOMC meeting. All right, all right, hi Jaden, good to see you as well. Okay, so this is on the four hour time frame. Let's see if we can identify uh, maybe where the second support could be. Let me see if I can use if you look, there's no real major. Uh, nice overlap. Let me see if I can use a Fibonacci retracement. All right. Okay. So I've used this Fibonacci retracement starting from this swing low on 30th of August, going up to the swing high here on 14th of September. Right. So when we pull up all the Fibonacci retracement levels, we can see that the 38.2% retracement level lines up very well with what we have identified as the first support. So we're going to keep 38.2%. That helps us reinforce the significance of this uh, first overlap support. Now for the second support, at least on the four hour time frame, uh, we do, there's no really, no real major overlap, but we do see a pretty decent 
I guess, pullback level around here, just above where the 61.8% Fibonacci retracement level lies. Let me just point that out for you here. And I'm going to highlight this as a green box. Right. Okay, I think we'll just tidy up everything. In terms of retracement levels, we'll keep 38 and 61. So let's do that. So we've tidied up uh, the retracement level so we can see that this price level here uh, between 103.90 and um, 104, it's a pretty decent uh, support zone uh, for the dollar index as well. We can see price making a significant swing here on 23rd of August. Then after that, you can argue it, it, it found support here on 25th of August as well. Uh, and then again on 29th of August before breaking lower and then coming back up again and then finding support once more, right? So I think this is how we can identify the second support for the dollar index on the four hour time frame. How do you confirm a valid pullback? What are the criteria you're looking for? All right, hi, Jaden. Okay, uh, okay Jaden has a question. How do you confirm a valid pullback? What are the criteria you look for? So basically, uh, at least on the higher time frames, right? When you look at the four hour time frame, for example, which is what we are on, uh, we will see less noise in uh, price fluctuations. So when we see price reacting off a particular level uh, multiple times or making significant swings, that's how we can use it to identify um, a, a, a valid uh, swing low resistance, swing high resistance or pullback or an overlap as well. All right, okay, uh, how would I do it? Like, okay, for example here, if we look here on 30th of August, we can see price making a very significant swing low here, right? Price uh, was initially trading about 104 to 36. It fell quite rapidly uh, going as low as, what is this, uh, 102.90 and then it uh, bottomed around here and bounced higher. So you can see when price makes significant swing lows like this, this is how this is where I would also identify as a major swing low resistance, right? So let's just say um, hypothetically, price has broken through the first support level here and the second support level here. If 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 that were to happen, then I would identify this level here, 102.91, as the next significant support for the dollar index. Right. This is one way of how we can use a significant swing low. And if even if I were to extend it back here as well, you can sort of argue that uh, price made another swing low bounce here. So in this scenario, we would, because we have two touches here, one here and the second one here, we can call this as a pullback support level or we can also call it as a multi-swing low support level, right? Because you can see price bouncing off here strongly once and then strongly again for the second time. So in this, when you see this type of price action, you can label this support level as a pullback support or even a multi-swing low support, right? So that's how we can use, uh, identify pullback levels, be it the resistance or support when you see price action such as this. Now, even if we go back to, uh, okay, right, welcome, Jaden. If you go back to see in early September, when price uh, broke above uh, or well, came close to 105, right, it ran into a sort of resistance here, right? Let me just highlight it, uh, label it as well. Just, I'll just put a red resistance line. So you can see price, once it hit uh, 105, it failed to break out of this range or break above this range over the next day or two. So in this scenario, we would, when you see price action like this, this would be called a pullback resistance level, right? This would be a pullback resistance level. And then when price came down here, you can see price was bounced up, bouncing off this level a few times. If you just look at this uh, in isolation, right? Then this, we would identify this as a pullback support. So you can see price uh, bouncing off this level. Uh, so we'd identify this as a pullback support. But when we zoom out and we see price making a significant swing high here, we would call this now an overlap level. Why an overlap? Because price has reacted off this level here as a uh, significant resistance. And then when price breaks above it, what was resistance in the past would then act as support, which is what we see here in mid of September. So when you have a scenario like this, we would call this now in this uh, current context an a major overlap support. 
right? And it is a uh, over major overlap support because we also have the 38.2% Fibonacci retracement level reinforcing the significance of 104.50. All right. Okay. So, um, uh, Right, so if price were to break through the first support and second support and, and continues to uh, drop below 10350, the next major support level for the dollar index would be at 103. Right, that's how we can uh, identify uh, uh, major support levels. Now, to the upside, right, as I mentioned earlier, we have. Uh, oh, can I just remove this? We don't need that. And I'll also clear this up as well. Right, okay. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, dollar index has been trading in a very narrow range since opening early this morning. It's been between 105.15 and 105.43, right? So we've identified these, this level here, 105.43 as an intermediate resistance and this overlap level here at 105.15 as an intermediate support. Now to the upside, we've used the Fibonacci projection levels. 61.8% Fibonacci projection level and 100% projection level to identify the resistance. Right, so do take note of this, uh, of the levels for, of the support and resistance levels for the dollar index on the four hour time frame, And we suspect that the dollar index is gonna pull back at least in the first half of the week until we have the FOMC meeting uh, come up on, uh, FOMC meeting conclude on the 20th of September, right? So if dollar index has been rising strongly since uh, mid-July, right? Coming to nine weeks of, it has already completed nine strong weeks of gains. Then of course the Euro will be falling, right? Which is what we see. Hang on, what is, okay, just let me clear this up. Apologies for that. All right, so as you can see, since middle of July, uh, the Euro has been in a very strong downtrend. I can also see, um, a potential, I associate a bearish trend line as well. And you can see a very strong, a bearish channel rather, right? We see, you can see a very, yep, we can see price uh, touching here, uh, the upper uh, part of the channel on 18 July, as well as on 30th of August. And then if you look at the lower, uh, lower bound price making, uh, touching the channel on 28th of July, as well as on 3rd of August, right? So the Euro has been falling, uh, quite rapidly over the nice over the last nine weeks as well. Right. But because we expect dollar index to pull back uh, at the beginning of this week, naturally we are seeing the euro being supported now, right? Euro is currently trading around 1.0673 and it could potentially uh, move higher. Now where are the major resistance levels on the uh, support uh, sorry, on the four hour time frame as well as the support levels as well. Let's try and identify them together. Right. We can use uh, Fibonacci retracement. Uh, hang on. Let me adjust this a little bit. I think we can start from this swing high here. Right. This swing high took place on 18th of July and ending with a swing low on uh, 14th of September. Let's pull up all the Fibonacci levels. Right, okay. So we have uh, this big downward move. We've done the Fibonacci retracement. We can see an overlap level here as well at 1.0760. And right? we can see price finding support here in 20, on 25th of August, then running into resistance on in mid-September. So we can see a nice overlap level here that lines up pretty close to where the 23.6% Fibonacci retracement is. And if I were to zoom out a little bit, do I see any other nice uh, overlaps? Probably not. Okay, I think as a first major resistance, would be here and 1.0765. Right. Um and also for if you want to identify something a little bit closer, because we see price uh making uh you can see price has made a significant swing low here as well, like a swing bounce here as well, right? We can see that this level here did of offer support when price was falling. So what was once a support level could then uh, potentially be a resistance level. 
So I would like, I would identify this pullback here at 1.0685 as an intermediate resistance level, right? Which is, which is uh, not too far from where price is currently trading. So if the euro continues to rise today and tomorrow, and it breaks above this intermediate resistance at 1.0685, we are quite likely to see it at least come, uh, come close uh, to where uh, this zone is here that's highlighted by my cursor. Right? We see the intersection between the first overlap resistance and the upper bound of the chat uh the upper line of the channel so this is a pretty strong resistance zone where you have the intersections as well right we can also use a fibonacci retracement on this part of the move right from this swing high on top september going down to the swing low here on 14 september okay let's zoom in a little bit Right, we can also see the 38.2% Fibonacci retracement level lines up quite well with the uh, intermediate resistance that we had found earlier. And then in terms of any other major overlap, just we can just keep the 61.8% here as well as a guide. So let's just keep 38 and 61%. All right, okay. So what we see here, right, so just to recap, uh, or, or not recap, but just to repeat, we did we use the Fibonacci retracement tool starting from the swing high here on 12th of September, ending with the swing loan uh, 14th of September. We've kept 38.2% and 61.8% uh, Fibonacci retracement levels. Why the 38? Because we can see it lines up very well with the pullback support level that we had identified at 1.0685. 61% is, of course, we know is the golden ratio. And once more, we can also uh, argue that this level here, uh, price found support around this level on 5th of September and then again on 12th of September. So what had acted in the past as a, as a pretty decent support level would then potentially act as a resistance level now, right? So this also lines up very well with where the 61.8% Fibonacci retracement level lies. Right. Okay. So uh, to the upside, these are some of the key resistance levels to look out for on the euro. Uh, first up, we have the intermediate resistance at 1.0685, lines up with the 38.2% Fibonacci retracement level. Then we have this zone here between uh, 1.0706 and 1.0718, which, which is where the 61.8% Fibonacci retracement level lies as well. And then we have the first major overlap resistance at um 1.0765 which aligns okay it's not exactly close but about 20 pips away from where the 33.6 percent fibonacci retracement level lies okay now what about to the downside we've identified all the resistance levels uh or rather the more immediate resistance levels on the four hour time frame we can now look at uh the support levels all right so first of all this swing low that took place on the 14th of September is where I would identify the first support level because this is, you can see price has made a very significant bounce of this level here, right? We can see price falling very sharply, finding support at 1.0633 and then has retraced higher, right? So when you see price action such as this, this should also uh, help us identify major swing uh, lows as well, or major support or potential uh, support level. So this is how we've identified the first support, which is a swing low at uh, 1.0633. Okay, now what about the second uh, support? Okay, so not only is this uh, price action here a swing low support, if we zoom out and we go back and look at what happened on 31st of May, we can also see price making a very significant significant bounce here as well, right? A very significant swing low over here on uh, 31st of August as well. So when we now extend the first support here from this swing low, right, and I pull it all the way here, we can see that this is now a pullback support, right? Because we have seen price bouncing on this level once and then again uh, of 
first of all, price bouncing on this level on 31st of May and then bouncing off on 14th of September. So this is now a very significant pullback support for the euro. And if price were to go higher, let's just say, hypothetically, it bounces very high coming up to where the first resistance is, then we can also identify this pullback support as a multi-swing low support as well. For now, we'll just identify it as a major pullback support. And this is where the first uh, key or significant support level for the euro lies, 1.0633. Okay, what about... um? The second, okay, in this case, let's just tidy things up, keep 23.6%. What about the second support level for the euro should 1.0633 uh, give way? If we see here, this is, an, uh, so this is also, if we look here, back on 24th of February, 8th of March, and uh, 15th of March, this is also a very strong pullback support level as well. So should price... Uh, fall as low as 105.80, 105.60, then this level here at 105, 1.0537 would then potentially offer significant support for price because you can see price making, uh, bouncing off this level three times. You can see three significant swing, swing lows here, right? This is the first one, second, and third, right? So three significant swing low price action, and a very nice pullback support here as well. All right, but okay, uh, what about the second support? How are we going to identify that? Uh, let me see, let me just... Yeah, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a Fibonacci retracement starting from the swing low 31st of May, going up to the swing high. I'm trying to use the extension levels, right? So the extension levels are uh, retracement levels that are greater than 100%. So in this case, it would be the 127 and 161%. So when you see um, price making, like an, in, in this case, it's like an inverse Nike tick sort of move, right? Or if you look on the biggest, uh, on a slightly uh, top view approach, you can see price making uh, and like a price action that's similar to an inverse Nike tick. So when price continues to fall in this manner like this, then potentially uh, the extension levels here at 127% and 161% help us to identify potential support areas. But as of now, we can see um, they lie simply too far from where price is currently trading, so they may not offer much uh, relevance now. But if price does break lower, you can see that this level between where the extension level lies and the pullback level lies would be a major potential support zone for the euro, right? So you can see how uh, we can try and identify major support zones when we zoom out a little bit and help use Fibonacci extension levels as well. All right, okay, but simply because this is uh, way too far from where price is currently trading, so let's just tidy up the chart and see where we can identify something a little bit more uh, closer or more relevant and more closer. All right, I think we can use a Fibonacci. Okay, let me just zoom in a bit. We can try and use, I would say, Fibonacci projection, right? So pro projection is the trend-based Fibonacci extension tool. So we'll start with the swing high here on 30th of August, going down to the swing low on 7th of September, and with the swing high here on 13th of September. Right, I'm using the projection tool to help us identify uh, uh, support levels, right? Okay, because we don't we don't see any other major pullbacks or overlap levels that are a bit closer to where price is currently trading. So in this type of uh scenario, we can use the projection tool, and uh, we can see where the other uh where price could potentially hit to or drop to should the first support level be broken, right? So we can see seventy eight point six percent is here. Uh, sorry, sixty-one point eight percent is here, uh, at one dot zero six zero four. Seventy-eight point six percent is here. So if we zoom out a little bit, let me see. There's a small pullback here. I wonder if it lines up with any of the projection levels. Okay, probably. I think okay. In this case, because there's no major. 
uh, pullback or support level that I see. So to help me identify the second support level, I will just simply use the 61.8% Fibonacci projection level. So it's about 30 pips away from where the first uh, major pullback support level lies. So in this, in this type of uh, situation, I would use the Fibonacci projection tool to help me identify a potential support uh, level for price. Right, so in this case, I'll just keep sixty one point eight percent, and I'll leave. Uh, I'll uncheck all the other projection levels. All right, okay. So this is the euro. We are on the four hour time frame. Um, so these do take note of the uh major support and resistance levels on the four hour time frame. Okay. Right. Okay. Next, um, we can move, next we'll move on to uh, the pound because we've also got uh, the Bank of England coming up this week. So let's just remove, start from a fresh canvas. So similarly as well, since mid-July, of course, if the euro is falling, dollar index is rising, naturally, uh, pound dollar is also falling. So let's see if there's a bearish channel that we can identify here for this uh, instrument. Let's see. Is there any... Yeah, there is uh, not the best bearish channel that I see, but yeah, because there's only one touch uh, that we have at the bottom here, but we have one, two, three, four touches to the top. So I think, okay, we can still use this bearish channel so that we know where price is uh, heading. We can see it's clearly making uh, lower highs and lower lows. Right, okay. Now what about uh, the more intermediate uh, support and resistance levels? Once again, we can see uh, here, price finding support at 1.2382. So I would use this pullback level here to help me identify the first support for the pound. Uh, if I were to zoom out, is there any other? Yes, you can see when I zoom out a little bit as well, you can see price uh, making a significant bounce here on the 5th of June. So we've identified, what we've done is we've identified a very uh, significant pullback level, pullback support level for the pound, right? So we can see back in um, 5th of June, price making a very significant swing low here and then bouncing very strongly. And now, as uh, when we fast forward to where price is trading, price has found support at this level once more. Okay. Uh... Okay. Hi. Uh, glad if I've pronounced. Hope I hope pronounce your name. But you've put your uh hand up. Uh. Yes. Uh, drop a question here. You can drop. You see. Yeah, please drop any questions or clarification that you may have in this uh, webinar chat box here. I'll be happy to uh, uh, go through. What about gold? All right, yeah, okay, we'll cover gold as well. All right, Zainab will cover gold as well uh, once we finish pound. All right. Okay, uh, okay, back to where we are. Sorry, on the pound. UK 100. All right, we'll try. Okay. Uh, yes, I think, yeah. Okay, we can try and do UK 100 as well. There should be sufficient time. All right, okay. So first support is here. Now, if you were to look at where the second major support for the pound is, we can see obviously here, back in um 25th of May, once again, price making a very significant swing low here and a bounce as well. So that's how we can identify the second support for the pound. Uh, all right, hi, Paul. Yes, I think if you go to uh, Tick Mill's website, uh, I mean, the, on the YouTube website and look for their past webinars, there have been webinars in the past that have covered uh, how to use the Fibonacci retracement tools and the Fibonacci projection tools uh, and uh, identify how we can um, use them properly, right? Okay, so do go over to you, uh, the YouTube page for Tick Mill and I believe the past um webinars on Fibonacci series should be updated. All right, okay. Uh, Odisica has a question, can we buy Euro USD now? 
Well, yes, potentially we do see uh, uh, the euro going higher. Okay, there's two things you can do because price is uh, after going climbing as high as 1.0678 it is now uh, has just uh, consolidated around 1.0670 so there's two things you can do one is potentially you could wait for the euro to pull back a little bit more uh maybe come down to 10650 before trying to uh before putting uh a buy position on and then the stop loss you could identify it either about 20 pips underneath the first major pullback support or uh, if you want something with a little bit uh, wider range or more buffer, then you would select it somewhere close to where the second support is. But generally, depending on your risk-reward ratio as a percentage and as, as also as an absolute term in terms of dollar value and pips, uh, probably, probably putting it about 15 to 20 pips below where the first major support has been identified would probably be a more uh, uh, prudent level to set the stop loss. So yes, you can look to buy the euro. Uh, should it pull back a little bit more to 1.0650 or you could potentially uh, buy it at market now as well, right? So depending on your risk reward ratio and where you set your stop loss, anywhere between 1.06650 40 to 10650 would probably be a decent uh, entry for the euro. All right. Okay. Then, okay, let's quickly end up, uh, round up with uh, the pound. Okay. Let's find the more uh, let's key resistance areas. Okay. We're going to use the Fibonacci retracement tool, starting with this swing high here on 30th of August, ending with a swing low here uh, today, 18th of September. We'll pull up all the fibs. Right. Uh, we can see uh, this level at 1.2458 where the 23.6% Fibonacci retracement uh, level lies. We can see price making a very, uh, finding support at this level on 7 September, 8 September, 12 September, and 13 September as well. So this is a very strong, this was a very strong pullback support level for the pound. And then of course now, that price is broken through this uh, previous pullback support level is actually going to act as a major resistance level. So that's how we identify the first major resistance for the pound. If we zoom up a bit, do we see any nice overlaps? No, not really. So that's fine. So let's just keep it, uh, use the 23.6% to help us uh, guide where the first resistance level should be. With regards to the second resistance level, if I look here in between the 38 and 50% retracement levels, we can see price making another uh, another overlap level as well, right? Uh, we can see price finding support here on 5th of September, then it broke through, then as it approached back to 1.2537, it ran into resistance again, and it proceeded to drop lower. So that's how we've identified the second resistance level, which lies, I guess, a little bit close to where the 50% Fibonacci retracement is. So we'll clean up the retracement levels and we just keep 23 and 50%. Right, okay, so this is uh, the chart for the pound for our time frame, and these are the immediate support and resistance levels. Is euro a long-term buy? Uh, probably not, because... Uh, we can see it's still in a strong bearish channel. Uh, the ECB has actually signaled that last week's uh, interest rate was probably the last one that they're doing. And it does appear that the Federal Reserve is still more overly uh, hawkish than the ECB. So what that means is we are likely to see the Euro uh, continuing to fall, right? Okay, of course, uh, no instrument or currency pair is going to fall in a straight line or rise in a straight line. There's going to be retracements uh, or pullbacks along the way. So for the first half of this week, at least I feel uh, and it does look like the euro is going to uh, head higher first. And then once we have the FOMC meeting and if Federal Reserve, if Chairman Jerome Powell is hawkish, we could see price reverse and then drop lower. So uh yeah so in terms of a long-term buy no i do not think uh 
I do not think uh, the euro is a long-term buy. All right, uh, Patricia, hope that helps your question because we can see price is still clearly trading in a bearish channel. We don't see any strong bullish movement, at least on the longer, on the higher time frames. Now, okay, we're going back to uh, the US dollar. Paul has a question. Yeah, that's, no, that's true. Um, they could keep rates on hold, right? It is forecasted that if you look at Forex Factory, the rates are going to be held steady at 5.5%. That could definitely have a bearish reaction for the dollar index. But the key thing to look out for following the uh sorry it was here federal funds rates they're going to keep it on hold what is going to be key is the press conference that follows the statement release if chairman powell comes out to be even mildly hawkish here during the press conference despite uh interest rates being kept on hold we could still see demand for the us dollar pickups so and do take note of how the press conference could have uh could impact uh the dollar as well all right, so going back to pound. Okay, so this is how we can conclude on the pound. Or so this is euro. This is how we can conclude on the pound. And then we had a, a request for gold as well. So let's just cover quickly cover gold and UK 100. All right, so gold will be XAU USD. All right, so gold, uh, as you can see, has also made a pretty significant swing low bounce here swing high here and then another swing low here so by looking at major swings we can identify uh, the resistance and support levels as well uh, so right so gold is currently trading around 1926 so we can see that um, also price also has made like a uh, swing sort of like a swing high resistance here back on 8th of September as well as 11th September. So this level here uh, does signal as a, a potential resistance area. So I would identify this as the first major resistance for gold. Right, You can see clearly here price failed to break out of uh, break above 1929 back in mid September or early September. And then again, uh, at the end of last week and today as well, price uh, has failed to break above this level once more. So when you see price action like it's such as this, this is a strong, pretty strong pullback resistance level. And that is why I've identified this as the first resistance. Now, with regard to the second resistance, you can see price making the swing high here on 1st of September. So I think that's more than sufficient to identify the second resistance level. Now, in terms of a major support, if you see where my cursor is now, you can see this is a pretty decent uh, pullback support level. Price bounced off this level here on 25th of August and as well as on 14th September. So this is at 1,903. So in terms of a major support level, this would be this pullback level here is what I would identify as the first support. Now, we can also use a Fibonacci retracement tool starting from the swing low on 14th of September, ending with the swing high on 18th September. Let's pull up all the fibs. Do we see any levels as well? Any other intermediate uh, levels? Okay, if you look at where the 50% Fibonacci retracement level lies, I do see another pullback level as well. So we can see here. Uh, if I were just to... Right. Okay. Then I'll just take the wick of the candle. So we can see this level here at 1914. Price making a significant swing bounce here on 29th of August and then finding support above this level on 6th September as well. And it, it also happens to line up quite well with the 50% Fibonacci retracement level. Okay. So now that I've looked at this uh, much more clearly, I would now actually identify 1914 as the first uh, major support for gold and then i'll use 1903 as the second support level right so do take note these are the main key support levels for gold um what about to the upside let's see okay um i can also maybe let's see if i do a fibonacci retracement here right we can also see Price is already broken above 51. We'll just keep 61%. All 
Right. Okay. So we can see that the first resistance lies slightly under where the 61.8% Fibonacci retracement level lies as well. So I think uh I think these are the key levels for gold on the four hour time frame. All right. And with dollar index uh potentially pulling back or uh, right. Gold and dollar index or the US dollar has a negative correlation. So that means when the dollar index is falling, gold prices should be rising, right? So we could see uh, gold continuing to rise today, but do take note that 1,929 is indeed a pretty significant pullback resistance for gold. All right. Uh, we just have time for, I believe, UK 100, right? Okay, we'll come, go into UK 100. Right, okay. I generally don't trade uh, the UK indices, but we can still perform the analysis here. So let's, what I like to do is with instruments that I'm not so familiar with, just look at it on a daily time frame at least to get some perspective on where it is trading. Right, so we can see since uh, mid-August, the UK 100 has rallied pretty strongly and we do see uh, run it running into resistance at about 7,700, right? So we can see back in, end of July, price making a very significant swing high here, right? So this swing here is now once again acting as uh, resistance for price. Do you have the sense of the use of it? All right. Hi, Paul. I think, yeah, I did mention that uh, do go over to Tickmill, Tickmill's YouTube website. The past webinars on the Fibonacci series should be uploaded there. If not, do keep a lookout for any upcoming uh, webinars that would cover Tickmill, uh, that would cover Fibonacci uh master classes and uh yeah do sign up for those all right okay so we can see price making a significant swing high here back in the end of july where price is currently running as well oh wait sorry i think i did answer your question sorry okay apologies for that paul i think uh yeah yeah sorry I thought it was a new question. My bad. Apologies. I thought it was a new question, but it's not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Back to UK 100. What we had identified as a major significant swing high resistance here is coming into play once more. Right. So I think it's pretty clear where the first major resistance for uh, the UK 100 lies. Uh, second resistance, if I were to look. Okay, I'm still on the daily time frame. Okay, maybe I just set this as first resistance. We can also use a Fibonacci retracement starting from the swing low here. 18 August going up to the swing high here. Let's pull up all the fibs and try and see if any of the Fibonacci levels line up. Uh, with Okay, we can see this level here where the 23.6% retracement lies. Right, we can see price making a pretty uh decent swing high here back in back on 10th of august and this swing high here also lines up quite well with the 23.6 percent fibonacci retracement level so i think we can use this to help us identify the first support level on the daily time frame all right okay so let's just do that and we'll keep 23.6 percent now let's just zoom in onto the four hour time frame to find uh levels that perhaps a little bit more closer and more actionable as well. Okay, so let's go on to this four hour time frame. Right, okay, so okay, first resistor, uh, first support here. Right, so if you look on the four hour time frame, you can actually see uh, price running into resistance on 19th of July and then finding support on 24th July. 26th July, and then once again, resistance on 10th of August. So you can see multiple instances where price has reacted off this level. So, and it also lines up, happens to line up well with the 33.6% Fibonacci retracement level. So that's how we've identified the first support. All right. All right. Thanks for joining, Paul. Uh, yeah, do, do head over to Tickmill's website, YouTube page, and do look out and search for... Uh, the past webinars on Fibonacci series. Okay, uh, with regards to the second support, um, let me see. Okay, we can also do a Fibonacci retracement on this part of the move here, 6th September to 15th September. This is on the four hour time frame. Pull up all the fibs. All right, where we see the 61.8% Fibonacci retracement level lies, 
there is a pretty uh, decent uh, pullback level as well. Or overlap, we see price running into resistance on 30th of August as well as 4th September, and then finding support on 13th of September. So I would use this level here. Probably just here yeah, somewhere. It's not the cleanest level, right? But I think uh, we can use this level together with the 61.8% retracement level to help us identify the second support for the UK 100, right? So second major support level for the UK 100 is at 7,500. First support is at 7,627. Now, what about to the upside? Where can we find the second resistance level? Um, Right. We can also use a Fibonacci extension level as well. Let's see, going up here, let's pull up the extension levels, 127161. All right. In this case, we can see that the 127% extension level lines up quite well with where we had identified uh, the swing high resistance. And the 161% projection level lies here, uh, which also could help us yeah, identify like we see price make running into resistance here back on in April and proceeded to drop lower. So I would identify this as a potential resistance zone for UK hundred uh with regards to the second resistance. All right, okay. Um yeah. Okay, so this is okay. Just to recap, we are on the four hour time frame for the UK hundred uh price has run into resistance uh, last week, which was the, I guess, a pullback resistance back in July as well. So this, do take note that these are the more actionable uh, levels for resistance and support for the UK 100. All right. Okay. Um, I've come to the end of this webinar. Um, I'm just going to launch a poll. Would truly appreciate it if you guys can read uh, this webinar. And also, uh, before we end, do take note, we have four key central banks uh, announcing their respective interest rate decisions. So it's definitely going to be a volatile week for markets. It does seem like it's pretty quiet thus far. But yeah, as once the Federal Reserve kicks things off with their FOMC statement released, it's going to be a pretty volatile end to the trading week, not only for currencies, but even perhaps for gold as well as the indices as well. All right. Okay. Um, right. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Hope this has been a great session for all of you and I'll catch you guys at the next webinar. Thank you.